Since Moodle 2 was released in November 2010, I've given a number of presentations on Moodle 2 and how it was different to Moodle 1.9. There's been lots of tweets, presentations and posts about why people should move or shouldn't move to Moodle 2, so I thought I should do an article on what I believe are the 10 key reasons to move to Moodle 2. 10 reasons? However, therein lies a problem. There are simply so many reasons for considering Moodle 2 that I found it just not possible to choose my top 10 reasons. So what to do? Well, I'm going to give three presentations on 10 reasons to move to Moodle 2 and ask you, my blog readers, to then vote for which reasons they feel are the top 10. Now, Moodle 2 contained a significant number of compelling new features when it was released. And its upgrade Moodle 2.1 also pushed that feature list to improve the platform. Between them, Moodle 2 now has a large range of feature improvements over Moodle 1.9. Some of those improvements are fundamental to how Moodle works, and some are neat features and additions, however some are massive leaps forward in usability and functionality. So which are the top 10? Which of those are the most important, the most significant? Join me in this road of exploration through some of Moodle's features. Management of blocks for course and site pages has been vastly improved. The controls are now consistent across all pages. Blocks can now be visible in activities and resources on a block-by-block -block basis. There's also been a range of new blocks added which provide excellent features from content or to extra controls for the user. Some of these new blocks are the Navigations and Settings blocks, and also the Private Files block. The Comment block is an interesting innovation for Moodle 2. Users can now add comments to courses, resources, and activities and blogs easily and without fuss. The block uses a nice AJAX interface so the comments are added without the page reload. These comments can also be reported on centrally to check for suitability. Some people just cannot get enough topics or sections, and now it's possible to set the maximum number of sections in a course to be greater than the original 52. You can also enable or disable student completion tracking of activities for the course through the settings, and choose whether the tracking begins on enrollment or when it's enabled. And as you can see here, you also can include course dependencies and course completion itself. With the new conditional release of activities in Moodle 2, you can restrict the release of a resource or activity dependent on one of three aspects. It's a date-based release, a grade or a particular activity, or completion of that particular activity. This enables a teacher to force a progressive path through course materials for the student. However, another interesting use is providing remedial material for someone who hasn't quite performed in a quiz or an assignment. All the resource options in Moodle now have been reworked into new, cleaner options. You can upload a selection of files into a folder. You can display a page with a specific URL. You can add a single page which is then configured using the new HTML editor. You can add a file for download or for viewing. You can also add a standard IMS package. And although it is not core, it is worth noting that the book module has also been updated. The My Moodle feature of Moodle has been improved in Moodle 2. The page is now regarded as the home for users with new blocks available for showing relevant information. The admin can decide a site-wide layout or let the student build their own. One of the new blocks is the private files area, which provides an in-Moodle storage area for users. This is very useful. With the new release, all of the most recent standard-based browsers are supported, which means the HM editor works for them all. These browsers include Firefox 3, Safari 3 in Leisure, Chrome 4 in Leisure, Opera 9 in Leisure, and of course Internet Explorer 7 in Leisure. As you'll notice, Internet Explorer 6 is no longer supported, and there again, even Google doesn't support IE6 anymore. The workshop activity in Moodle 2 is a great peer review tool. Although it was working in Moodle 1.9, it has been completely rewritten from scratch to deliver a huge improvement on the user interface. The workshop provides a phased activity where the teacher sets up the task and assigns criteria and optionally an example submission. And the student submits their work. The student then assesses other work um, once they are assigned by the teacher. And the teacher reviews the grades. The wiki in Moodle 2 has also been rewritten from scratch. It now supports multiple wiki syntaxes, including the wiki style and creole. You can easily check and manage the history of the pages. 
You can view a map of all the pages and identify any pages which have been unlinked, and users can also comment on the pages. The question engine in Moodle has been rewritten to make it more flexible and more robust. The user interface for the quiz has been majorly improved for the students, providing a good summary of the answered and unanswered questions before finally submitting. The user is able to navigate between the questions more easily using a persistent list of questions. And the settings are clearer and the interface is better for building the questions. So that was it. 10 reasons to move to Moodle 2. This presentation is the first in a sequence of three presentations, so be sure to check out the other two. Also, feel free to check out my blog on someRandomThoughts.com for more information. Or follow me on Twitter, SideShare, or LinkedIn. Thank you.